What's going on, guys? Michael back with another live episode of Frugal Fishing Fundamentals. Alex from Fishing the Odds. Fishing the Odds, baby. Back in the house. Back in the house. Took yeah. a week off, you know, a little vacation and stuff. Yeah, we missed one, but whatever. Um, I'm sorry for the interruptions in the beginning. We were having a little difficulties with cameras and whatnot. And we're still having difficulties pulling this up right now, so I don't know who's watching or what's going on, but anyways, <clears throat> I guess I could pull it up here. Tonight we have. Get rid of that. Uh, tonight. <clears throat> showing all my stuff on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, tonight is cool because we're doing a couple uh, new things. So the first thing uh, is what we're doing is we're showcasing another uh, YouTube channel. So um, the Killer YouTube channel. Yeah, and it's a local channel here, and we want to. Um, we want to do this, start doing this on our live feeds that we have, and um, basically, if you guys want to be showcased on here, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about your channel and play it in the background and whatnot, um, you guys can send me an email and have, what do we say, an hour of content on a playlist for us where we can play. One hour minimum. Like, that's what Nick did for us today, so um, generally because our live feeds are about an hour long, so look. Anyways, so yeah, that's what we're doing. So the first channel we're going to showcase tonight is right here. So this is Northwest Open Season, and Nick and Jer are two brothers that run this uh, channel, and they are local here in the Portland metropolitan area. And um, this channel is really cool because they do fishing and hunting, and they have a bunch of really good how-to videos and... Um, some of the stuff they come up with. Ian, uh, thank you for your uh, kind comments on my on my live feed. Ian, thank you. So uh, yeah, the content's great, and he sent me or he has a, he put up a playlist today that we're gonna just play in the background, and um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you guys um, haven't checked out this channel, it's Northwest Open Season, and whenever this video's over, I'm gonna link it in the description, and so you guys can go check it out and go over there and see what you think. But it's cool if you're local, and it's cool if you're not local. Whatever. So anyways, we're just going to click on our playlist here, get this going, and then we're going to talk about our giveaway next. Oh, yeah. So we got two live feeds going here. This one's you, just so you know. Okay. That's your comment section and everything. This is... He said for the giveaway question, make it fishing related. Uh, we have the question picked out. Um, it's fishing related, right? Yeah. Is this you or me? Me. I'm all confused now. My volume's bad. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. So anyways, you guys, if uh, if you have, if you guys don't know about our giveaways or if you guys are new to the channel or whatever, we do a, try to do a giveaway each week, just a you know, token of appreciation. And we do a cool trivia question, and usually it's related to fishing. So, um, so you, are we going to do the competition on both channels? Yeah. Well, phone competition. Yeah. So whoever's listening on my channel, this applies <laughs> to his channel as well. Same thing. Yeah. So it's on both channels. So we're going to be watching both comments here. And it is fishing. So later in the live feed, we're going to ask you guys a question. And the first one to respond is uh, we give it away. So, and if you guys look at my Instagram, Frugal Fishing Fundamentals, uh, you guys will see the last um, giveaways that we've done. So, the prizes for whatever that is. There's cool know. prizes, so, and they're all relevant yeah, to cool fishing and, and what's going on mm -hmm. out there. Uh, you know, trout, steelhead, these, these are things that pertain to, to what's going on. So, they could be very useful. Yeah. Okay. That's me grab the logo. Okay, you can do it. Um, so, let's see, let's see the giveaway questions. questions. Don't you want to wait? You usually wait like 10 or 15 minutes. Or you want to do it right now? Yeah, let's wait. Let's wait. We're going to do it. Soon. Anyways, so we're going to start with the weekend wrap up. Uh, you know, we've been off for two weeks or whatever. So, we did a little bit of fishing. Each of us did some fishing, but I don't think we fished together, did we? No. Nope. Separate. So, 
separate stuff. And <clears throat> I went to the coast to mess around. If you guys seen my last little vlogging video that I messed around and did, uh, basically I went out there, messed around the coast on Saturday, and didn't have any luck. And I talked to a couple other guys, and nobody was seeing anything. Again, it's a little bit early. The hatcheries out there that I'm talking to are reporting a little bit of steelhead here and there, but again, you know, it's whatever. We I told them it was early for the record. <clears throat> anyways, we plan to get back out there soon. That being said, and um, you know, the next day I camped out there, and the next day um, it started pouring rain, so I just went and did some exploring. That's pretty much it. So, but I, I, I got the Goonie House. <clears throat> that was cool. Yeah, the, the Goonie House, and doing a little bit of research on that. That, all that stuff's interesting. If you guys don't know about it, check on it. It's kind of sad, actually, but anyways, it was cool to see that and everything. So, I've just been sturgeon fishing, basically, because I know that steelhead's tough right now, everywhere you go, and I know that the, the rivers are blown out. You know, we had some crazy rain the last yeah, last few days, the last week, so i kind of just been, been hanging tight on the steelhead, and... Um, I will tell you guys though, for New Year's, um, we do have a pretty cool steelhead trip planned. It's going to be two to three days of nothing but straight steelhead fishing, and um, I can almost promise we'll find some fish. I mean, that's that's my opinion, at least. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I've been sturgeon fishing the last couple weeks, and um, my efforts have been focused at Swan Island um, in Portland, and... Oregon City. Um, but bank fishing in Oregon City, right? Yeah, bank, <coughs> fish, bank, bank fishing in Oregon City, and I came up empty both times. Um, I did get a couple bites, but but really, the spots I'm at, it's hard for me to get into those holes, so um, you really don't catch much fish from the bank down by the wall in Oregon City. On the Oregon City side? On the Oregon City side. And on the <laughs> West Lynn side, if you go down to the old dock, you guys, you're going to waste a lot of gear because there's a cable that runs under that dock, and you might as well not even fish there, unless you got homemade weights or something. But, but you're, you're just going to lose a lot of gear. So you do lose a lot of gear. You lose a lot of gear, you might catch a fish. That's the thing. And so, so I just kind of fish under the bridge on the west wind side. At least you can get into that hole um, on, what is it, on the uh, north side of the bridge, and, and uh, there's better opportunity there if you go away from that dock. And the Swan Island's been killing it. I'm catching fish like crazy at Swan Island. You guys can check out my videos. Um, I just posted up two videos the last two weeks, and they're both Swan Island. So I know, dude. I'm sorry, guys. My volume on this phone sucks for now. Um, hopefully, during the next live feed, I'll have better. If better you guys volume. want, you can. I don't know if this would work, but you can open up my channel for the sound. And still have yours open. I don't know if you guys can open both of them at the same time, but we're broadcasting on two different channels for you guys watching his channel. Yeah. So anyway, this channel is Frugal Fishing Fundamentals. Uh, <clears throat> for you guys watching, you can you can check out that live feed. Personally, yeah. I don't really care which one you watch. We need uh, we need to get microphones. So yeah, you know when we continue doing these, you guys, we plan to invest and try to get better cameras, lighting, uh, microphones. We were talking about lighting and color today. And actually, right now on my channel, you guys are viewing through a filter, so hopefully it's a little bit better. But I'm not really super impressed. But you guys are hunters. <laughs> Check it out. I'm so excited about this. Alex and I are thinking about um, about getting into at least archery in general, but we want to get into maybe try some hunting maybe next year or the year after that, and maybe experiment with some some compound bows. I, in the I can almost guarantee you guys will see a hunting video on my channel next year. My, my go. family goes in November, they go elk hunting, and they go for two weeks. So I might straight bow hunt for two weeks. Um, I don't know. So. Um, oh yeah, the decals. Yeah, the decals. Yeah, the decals or whatever. Um, Brandon made these for me. Thanks again, Brandon. And we have like big ones and, and small ones here. Um, this it's just a run for people that are in the frugal net, um, but I will say that the winner of the giveaway tonight, I'll throw a couple stickers in there for you or whatever, but uh, we just did like a little limited run, and like I said, they're for my frugal net, and if you guys don't know about my frugal net, you guys can go back in my videos and check it out, but I have 
we have a network <coughs> of like a 20 fishermen or something, and it's awesome. And we exchange information all the time. And it's so cool because I've learned so much um, because a lot of the guys are really in the up and up, and they'll, they'll post, you know, they'll, they'll text in and post in or whatever and, and, you know, tell us what's going on and blah, blah, blah. And mm. um, there's, there's been two particular times I'm trying to think. I know one of them is uh, when the Columbia closed, you know, I was in a state of mind where I wasn't really watching the fishing regulations or watching what was going on or paying attention because I was kind of upset because of that ticket I got. But because of the frugal net, I was pre-warned that they were shutting the Columbia down within the next 24 hours or whatever crazy amount of time it was. And I was able to get my stuff together and get out on the water and catch my last salmon on the Columbia River this year. And I owe that to the frugal net, you know. And it's pretty awesome. So these, like I said, these stickers are there. Now, my sister, okay, she's helping me out a little bit and working with me. And we're actually working on some t-shirts and some other stuff or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But that's all in the future. So, But I'm really super proud of these stickers because they're awesome. I'm going to put one on my... And they come truck. out killer. Yeah, they're sweet. And I put a few on my... Uh, you my can see they got a little fruit fan hanging out the mouth right there. There's one on my, my bead time box. So this sticker is kind of proof that frugal spins do catch salmon. There you go. You know what I'm saying? So there you go. Also, I wanted to talk about fishing opportunities again. And uh, th this. Let's go ahead. Oh, look at that deer. Yeah. But uh, this this last weekend, I was also looking into trout fishing a lot, and uh, they put broad trout in a lot of lot of small lakes and they put some in i think henry had too they're always dumping them in there they're always dumping, but broad yeah. trout are big trout they're anywhere from like five to fifteen pounds they're big trout so if if you want that taste of steelhead mm. you know um go go check out odfw's website and see where they put these trout because there's still some broad trout out there that you guys can go catch and and yeah, I'd be a lot of fun. I think a lot of the higher elevation lakes are starting to get snowed in now. I don't know if Timothy Lake Road's been shut off or whatever, but I assume that there's probably too much snow to be fishing up there now. So, but uh, we what we crossed uh, we went through government camp what a month ago. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm sure now it's probably all snowed in. Uh, I guarantee it. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, yeah, fishing opportunities, you guys really, uh, uh, Henry Hag, um, and I, I'm thinking about maybe getting out there, you know, but uh, this weekend, maybe. I don't know. I have two 40 weekends ahead of me, and I don't know what I'm doing with the first one, but like oh, you were saying earlier, in the second one. So I'm trying to read your guys' comments at the same time and look at two different streams of comments. All right. Oh, wait, what did he say? I was trying to read. How long are we in? Do we do a giveaway? <coughs> we, well, did, we did a giveaway question. Well, we have we have to talk about trout and we have to talk about surgeon. And um, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's talk. I'm gonna start this off because I love trout fishing and the trout fishing is probably something I know the best. But I want to talk about some of my favorite techniques and he's gonna talk about some of his favorite things. And <coughs> you guys know I like to troll and so on and so on. You know, trolling is so much fun for me. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but I can remember when I didn't have a boat, I would rent boats to go out and troll for trout. It was kind of ridiculous sometimes. But, um, you know, basically, this is one of my go-tos. It's the black rooster tail. And if you guys watched a lot of my videos, you guys know that I love throwing this rooster tail. And the great thing about the rooster tail is you can troll it right from the back of the boat with nothing else. You throw some six or eight pound test on it on any rod or reel and throw it out of the back of the boat and just drive around the lake and you'll catch fish. Or four, four pound test. Yeah, whatever. Unless you're catching a big one. Oh, God. I see the eight pound. Anyways, you can also put a little bee, uh, you know, a little drop shot in front of it to get it down a little deeper if you like or whatever and blah, blah, blah. But um, I'm a little more sportsman. I'll go with four, four to six. Yeah, I don't know about all that eight pound. So, um, my go-to when I'm trolling, you guys, when I'm getting, you know, into it and um, this is one technique I like to use at Henry Hagen for the higher elevation lakes. 
And now that I have this rod, you guys seen I caught a, what steelhead on that rod, or we caught a coho on there? Yeah, we caught that a coho. coho. Yeah, we caught a coho on the smaller rod, which is actually a kokanee rod, and it has a size 15 Okuma magna on it, and it's it's awesome. Um, so I have a line counter <coughs> with a. <coughs> I have not fished with reservoirs, no. So no, I have that set up. Sorry. I have that set up for trout and basically my favorite go to would be a dodger setup. You know, something like this on a short leader, you know, say ten to twelve inches. Um, this is the four uh, yeah, size four dodger. This is the lure Jensen. Those are great. Um, you know, and then after that, you know, as long as that thing's swimming, there's a lot of things you guys can throw. But uh, another go-to, all oh, my stuff came with up, hmm, is uh, wedding rings. And you can see on my little wrap I have here, this is my trout gear. Um, you can see there's a, quite a few wedding rings because wedding rings are killer for trout behind a dodger. And um, these will catch kokanee too. You can get down deeper and you, you can start targeting the kokanee. Um, That's kind of my favorite thing to do is troll. I'll usually put a half ounce to an ounce on there. Uh, sometimes we'll use uh, the wiggle hoochies. So the wiggle hoochies work good, but you, you're typically targeting uh, larger trout with the wiggle hoochies, from my experience. And you know, use something like this. And then uh, this leader's a little bit on the long side. It's probably more on the, say, the 14 inch ish. You know, typically you want to go maybe, say, a short or something like that, maybe 10 to 12. Um, and that's part of the reason know. for that is so this has better action behind your attractors. Yeah, because these things thing don't like whip crazy like a pro troll would or something. You know, this they're kind of just kind of kicking like this. Yep. So, but yeah, this and this will do a that. spin thing like mm -hmm. like a spinner, and it'll kick a little bit. So, that little extra enticement, you know, why not shorten up your leaders a little bit? Yep. But if the trout are being finicky, sometimes. It's good, to that. it's good to lighten your line and lengthen your leaders if you know there's trout there, but you're not getting bit. And that's kind of what I do and what I swear by. But yeah, Kelly, we'll fish for Kokanee for sure. I I know a killer place. Hey, Kelly, um, what's going on? Wiki Up Reservoir has big Kokanee down in Central Oregon. That reservoir is a killer place to troll for Kokanee. And uh. Trolling, that's, that's your setup, dodgers and wedding rings, rings are pretty much my go-to. And if, like I said, I'm if it's slow, or you know what, what I'll do if it, if it's not if it's not going good, like I think, I'll start messing with my elevation and I'll start going up and down depending on the waters, the time of year, the temperatures, and all that stuff will kind of set my my depth and whatnot. But, mess uh, with your speed you as know, well sometimes. Yeah, that has a lot to do with it, the speed and. You know, the basics of trolling, you guys. Don't ever troll straight. Always troll like you're drunk, you know, and that goes a long way. So, but yeah, that's basically, and like I said, if it's, if it's not doing that, you know, I have these other kokanee rigs sometimes. Okay, that's how a lot of trout off these kokanee lures or whatever, you know, and then Rapalas. I always carry a Rapala or two. If you guys don't know about Rapalas, these are, these can be fire sometimes. Got some good trout off these. I call I call that a jerk bait in bass land. Okay, jerk bait. No. So. That, that could be a too. Anyway, so I, yeah. I, I kind of swear by uh, black and yellow. Um, black and yellow. Black wedding and rings. Yellow. Not the song. I don't care for the song at all, actually. But black and yellow wedding rings. Baby cowbells work great too. Bass land. <laughs> don't forget corn. Well, yeah. Okay, for corn. Carp? Um, Carp and corn? Those are no. not, uh, I tip the hook of those wedding rings with corn if I'm targeting kokanee. And I do a little cure, you know, I'll throw some garlic and stuff on the corn, and I'll maybe do like a red and um, a blue corn or something, you know, and then it's fun to get the kids out because <coughs> the kids get to pick the color of corn and, and that kind of thing. And so that, that stuff's fun. But, yeah, I'd like to target kokanee at some better lakes than like Timothy because even you. this year, Timothy's kokanee run, or whatever you want to call it, was horrible. It was just like fingerling. You know, they're so tiny. Yeah. The, the two years before that was a little bit better. So. I don't think you've fished Wiki Up before, have you? No. Wiki Up 
dude, that's Koken. That's Koken What's land. going on, Ryan? What's up, Ryan, from the Life of a Fly Fisherman? Life of a Fly Fisherman. So, like Kelly King's on here, Life of a Fly Fisherman. Yeah. Code Nation. Cod Nation. Co yeah, Cod Nation, sorry. But, uh, yeah, black and yellow, I caught a lot of trout on. The first time I ever went trout fishing with Mike, we were out at Henry Hyde Lake, we were trolling, and, and I was... I started off trolling, it might have been a red and like maybe silver wedding ring. I was doing alright, but I switched to a black and yellow, I caught like 12 fish, 13 mm -hmm. fish, with just the black and yellow alone. And then, recently I was at uh, North Fork, and I trolled there, and I caught a coho on a black and yellow, and I caught like 7 or 8 trout that day, as well as the coho on the black and yellow wedding ring. So, I do the same presentation he does, you know, I troll with the Dodger, primarily. But they do make these little flashers that you control with. They got a little triangle on the end of them, made by Lure Jensen as well. And it's basically like a bunch of leaf blades going down a wire. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like some people call them floor fenders or whatever. Floor fenders, yeah, yeah pretty much. And then we have this, too. I forgot to talk about this. Um, oh, yeah. This school of fish. School of fish. So This works for salmon as well, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you guys watch some of the angler wise videos or catch some, some milk on this with, you know, herring. <laughs> And actually, if you guys are bass fishermen, you know that you can put, like, little flukes on the end of all these. And uh, you can have, like, a whole bunch of little white flukes swimming around with, with all these flashers. And, and that works really well for, for bass fishing. So mm -hmm. sometimes you'll actually catch two bass at once because they fight over they fight over it. So Yeah, that's, this is an awesome attack. That's what I like that. I love this thing. It's so pretty. I'm going to try one and lose it. <laughs> yeah, so Cali Dreams, you know about Ford Fenders, man. Yeah. Steelhead yeah. talk. I I have this is probably my version. It's on a pole. I know it's kind of. Oh, you just made a video comparing those two types. A lot of people use the the rings out here. Yeah. Um. You want to talk? You want to oh, cool? Yeah. That's cool. So you want to talk uh, steelhead? What do you want to talk about? There's not much really going on. Um. Uh. Techniques. Yeah, techniques. Um. Go ahead, techniques, or... No, he's not saying techniques, I'm just saying... Oh. Right now, I'm probably just going to throw a stop at these. Oh, I'm not fishing for steelhead right now. Right, I'm not either, because it's so blown out. That's why I said there's not much to talk about, but... That's why I'm thinking of hitting some of those local lakes, like Henry Hag this week, and messing around there, maybe. And then, like I said, we're, we're headed out back out to the coast. Well, if you want to catch some sturgeon, then... We're going to kill it. Yeah, you can go turkey fishing, but still, the rivers are nasty. I don't even know if I want to throw nature right now. I haven't checked the flow rates, you guys, but... Um, anyways, I wouldn't throw nature in. Yeah, Logan, you're probably right, because it's drying up a little bit. It's giving these uh, rivers a chance to to, yeah. to get better, you know? Plunking. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever plunked a steelhead. No, not much of a plunker, but, you know, I'm always... No, that's not true. Stuff. I used to plunk spinning gloves all the time. Yeah? Yeah, I used to plunk spinning gloves. That's, that's a good thing. But... Cool, cool. Um, some guys plunk row bags. You know, a little fawn. You can... You can plunk it with a freeway swivel, and your row is, like, in a bag, so it lasts a lot longer. And, and that's just a killer way you can steal that fish. Plunking row bags, especially on some bigger rivers, you know, like the Columbia or something. Wait a minute, I can't make sure. I want to see the video. Can you see people really do anything? I want to make sure I'm not blocking videos. What if you flip over the fish? Actually, I think he's fighting the steelhead in this video. Or is that his little trout? Which river are you talking about, Fisherman Chris? Dr. Bates, straight down the OC dock. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The OC dock, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we were talking about the docker a little bit earlier. Rig TFA, what's going on? Fishing levers. Oh, yeah, that's your name. Cool. Hope to see you guys in the next 
What, two days? Like Friday? Two days, yeah. I'm going to try to make that happen. I'll contact you guys. So, how big was your TV? I haven't caught anything over eight feet, so. Well, I caught a five-footer there. On my, my first time fishing that dock, I caught a five-footer. And I caught another a, a little shaker, and then I caught like a three-footer, four-footer, all within two hours. Yeah. And I lost, I don't know, maybe only two or three rigs. <laughs> Every time I go there, I lose two or three rigs. That's well, why I don't do it. Like you said, if you're fishing there, you better pull up a fish. If you're going to pull up and you're not pulling up a fish, you're going to lose your stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let the fish pull it up for you. Five foot, yeah. You know, you know if you go fish the bank at Bonneville Dam, you're not going to lose as much gear. And... You're, there's bigger, or not bigger, I don't want to say bigger, but there's more big fish at Bonneville than there is Oregon City. In my opinion. In my opinion. It's bigger water, too, though. It's, it's bigger water. Yeah. But you can fish the nice hole right from the bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Well, you ready for the question? I'm going to let you ask the question. Because... It is there's nothing written down there for you. Look at my scratch notes. Remember that one. <laughs> so that was trivia question. Want me to ask it? I know it now. What video? Okay, we want to know which video my first catfish was caught. Yeah, just the title. So the first person to comment the title of his video when he that was filmed when he first caught a catfish on film. My first that catfish on, on film. film. Yeah. Which video was it on my channel? There you go, guys. There it is. So, is that going to bring us into our next? We're, we're, we're this topic that we have. We're like hitting on it on every other topic. I know, like right? Sturgeon fishing. <laughs> yeah, we definitely wanted to talk about sturgeon fishing. Yeah. One of the main things is bait. If you guys can fish um, during the shad season, stock up your freezers if you got room. What? I didn't see. What is he saying? Uh, where was that? Oh, he's talking about the o Oregon City dock. Mark Leslie, it's the Oregon City West Lynn side dock. Yeah. It's the dock in, on the West Lynn side of the river. It's the public fishing dock. So you got to park up on some parking lot, whatever. They got some little bit blocked off now. I don't even know. I haven't been there in a minute. But and then you got to walk down this crazy ladder stair thing. But it's a good place. Yeah, it's a good place to fish for sturgeon. And and on that topic, um, shad is a killer, if not the best bait for sturgeon fishing, and you can cut it up if you want, you know, but if you want to go for the big boys, if you want to go for those 9, 10, 11, 12 footers, fish a whole shad, yep. rig that thing up, man, fish that whole shad, and just let it down there, wait for fish to bite, usually the smaller fish can't eat that whole shad, you know, the 3, 4 foot sturgeon, they can't eat a whole shad like that, um, they can, they can peck at it and everything for sure, but, um, if you want to catch a big fish, that's one of the best ways to do it, whole shad. And yeah. that applies to Bonneville as well, obviously, you know, pretty much anywhere, because sturgeon just love the shad. And the thing is, is well, see, okay, about the, the shad being fresh, Chris, the shad's running right at the end of the salmon run, so, um, and uh, sturgeon, you can't fish the sturgeon. You, you guys got to, if you're going to use shad, you got to keep your shad and freeze it. I mean, that's the only way to fish it, like, this time of year if you keep it yourself or whatever. I have a buddy down the road who keeps it frozen, so I can call him up and get some if I wanted some. But going back to what he's saying, using whole sturgeon in Oregon City, you guys got to remember that there's people that whole shad fly. Yeah, whole, I'm sorry. What did I say? Whole sturgeon. Whole sturgeon. <laughs> using whole shad for sturgeon. You know, there's there's videos that I've watched of people flying out from, you know, across the United States to fish right here in Oregon City. Mm -hmm. on guideboats 
to catch these oversized sturgeon, and they're using whole shad, like he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking the big three pounders, four pounders that you can catch out here. But uh, you know, if you catch, keep the smaller males, and those are great to use whole. And but that being said, my two personal best have come from cut shad. So, and and to to fishing a frozen shad. Uh, I've done it, but actually I thaw my shad out yeah. before I fish it. Yeah, I recommend thawing them out. I, I thaw it out naturally, actually. And before I fish, I'll pull it out of the freezer, you know, three hours early. And I'll just let it sit. And it starts to thaw out naturally. And, uh, dude, shad stinks. I'm telling you right now, it stinks. I don't even want to thaw it out in the house. Mm -hmm. It's nasty. But, and they vibrate. How come nobody's answering the trivia question? Yeah, do you guys do you guys not know? Because if you don't, you got time. <laughs> yeah. You got time to figure out uh, what video I caught my first catfish in. That is a trivia question. My first catfish on film was the deal. And by the way, guys, um, in in one of my next two videos that I post um, on my channel. So the next couple weeks, be watching out for a giveaway because I'm going to be giving away a fishing jacket. Um, oh, what? Yeah, uh, it's a camo. Can I enter? It's a camo fishing jacket, and in the next two weeks, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, so look out for it on my channel, Fishing the Odds. Can I enter? What? Oh, hell no. It's nice, too, especially for the winter. Is it? Who is it? Who gave it to you? Video number three, you have to have the video title as well. He said that in the initial. Is that it right there? Logan, you got most of the answers, but that's not the video title. Man, you didn't even watch that video, Fisherman Chris. No, uh, it's it's not the trout video, no. Lo Logan's Logan's pretty close. No. I thought that was it there on that one. Brew. Want another brew? Sure. I'll take one of these brew. Gotta get some brews. Logan says, John Day River first bass of 2018. No. What? Nope. No? Nope. Look, man, they got some good videos. Look, that's some good quality. They look great. They look better than my videos. Well, it don't take much to look better than my nah, videos. Yeah. Well, he's probably filming with more than a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> In case you guys are wondering, I have pizza. <laughs> Every last eve. I don't. I have a sandwich tonight, but it's still from Domino's. But Domino's seems to be our theme. One brew left. I missed the question. Kelly, the question is, what is the video title of the of the first catfish I caught on film? Just the name of the video, right? That's all we're looking for. Just the name of the video that I caught my first catfish cat on film. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Not it. We don't have it yet. They're just going through the, the website. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Is that Ryan? It is. Ryan, look. If you're still watching. <laughs> so that's the fly fishing ninja, you guys. Um, he's from Ben, and we went out there fishing with him a couple months ago. That's a great guy. He has a great channel. It's um, the life of a fly fisherman. What's up, Jeremy? What's going on? It's not carp fishing on the Willamette. That's a good question. We're getting a lot of guesses, huh? Mm. Where are the kokanee around here? Oh, what is he? I didn't even see him. Oh, that's a little bit older. 
No, that's a new one. We just moved from Colorado, man. We had all we had was that. So, uh, it, what fishing topics do you guys want to talk about? Well, he's asking about where the cooking are around here. So, I don't know locally. The only place that I really target Kokanee is up at Timothy Lake. You guys, I am like addicted to that lake. I love it. I love going up there. I love camping up there. It's just, I don't know. I'm just attracted to that place. So, and I fish for Kokanee there. And it's, it's not that great. They're really small. The limits are insane. I think you can keep like 30 a day. But, you know, I want to go to like some of the bigger lakes. You know, there's one down south we were talking about. Centauria? Yeah. Yeah, Wakey Up Reservoir. Yeah. Wakey yeah. Up Reservoir. And actually, if you go up there and you're into trout fishing or bass fishing, uh, Davis Lake is a fly fishing only bass fishery. Huge largemouth bass in Davis Lake. And they also got um, Crane Prairie Reservoir, which is killer for largemouth bass as well. You're like three, four pound on average. And they have big rainbow trout that get put in there all the time in Crane Prairie Reservoir. So, um, if you guys like to travel a little bit to do some fishing, like I do, look at the trout stockings in that area, the central area, because a lot of times there's big mm -hmm. trout in those huge reservoirs. So Yeah, and there's also, you know, you can just start researching the local lakes that you're interested in, and you'll see, like, there might be, you know, they might say there's coconut in there. For instance, um, Harriet Lake, there's supposed to be coconut in there. Now, I've never caught any coconut there, but I've never put a boat in there. But I know it gets really deep towards the end, so it could, you know, and there's obviously a river to connect it to. So, but, you know, as far as being local. And again, I don't even know where you are really around here at Fisherman Chris. Um, so, look, dude, Logan disappeared. <laughs> He's like, I'm looking for that video. <laughs> I fished him in Washington State. Merwin Reservoir, I've heard of that, yeah. Um, and Neo Lake. So Mervyn Reservoir, I think um, the what state of Washington did a, a fishing video there at Mervyn Reservoir. I'm not mistaken. What, where's that at? Just like that. What part of Washington? I don't know. I don't know Washington very well. What part of Washington is that at? I'm curious because I'm kind of looking for coconut places as well. Well, there's the world record place, the Walla Walla or whatever. Or the, yeah. yeah. That's where we should go. Just quit screwing around, make the drive out there and do it. Seriously. Yeah. That's where the world record was caught. You're probably right, dude. Don't mess around all these places with this yeah. weekend. If we can go out there. Look, there's the um, West Lynn public fishing dock right there. About 10 feet in front of this dock, there's a cable. And if your fish, if you're fighting your fish, and he runs like the wrong direction, you're going to snag up. And your fish is funny because. Well, it's actually not funny, but your gear or the fish, whatever, will wrap around this cable that's underwater. He's not catching sturgeon. He's catching shad. Yeah, you can do that too. But if the fish wraps around that cable, um, he, he could still be hooked. And oftentimes you feel it tug back and everything, but you're snagged and you can't get it out and you're screwed. And nine times out of ten, you lose that fish on that fishing dock. Out there trolling for salmon still. Woodland, hell yeah, man! I'll fish. I'll fish for cocaine with you, North Fork. Yeah, you got a boat? I winterized my boat, so. You go on the one feet person over there, right? Two, not two. Yeah. Not a dog though. If that's what you're wondering. Yeah, so if you ever want to fish. Guys, just hit me up and um, limited out on Saturday. Sweet. Sunday is kind of my day to fish. So if you want to plan something, try to plan it on a Sunday because that's pretty much my open time right now before I'm out and left. So Sunday is the day. Sunday, fun day. Sunday, fun day. Pizza. What else do you want to say about sturgeon fishing? Anything or do you want to focus more on kokanee? It seems like people are kind of wanting to know about kokanee. I don't blame them, to tell you the truth, but. I don't know, like I said, the uh, only coconut fishing I do is up higher right now, and all that stuff's snowed in now. I told them my coconut spot, I don't really fish for it here, so whatever. We gotta go. 
blue well blue. We love it. I guarantee we love it. It's beautiful too. And when I do some camp up there where I got property, and it'll just be amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. There's the bridge. Your boat is ready maybe after Christmas. For sure, dude. After Christmas, um, I got New Year's plans already for fishing, but maybe after New Year's, if, if that's something you're into, you know, on a Sunday. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not even... Oh my goodness. I was way off on the comments, you guys. I'm sorry. I thought my comments were current. I'm like, nobody's commenting. And I just scrolled down here. I'm like, oh, dude. We'll scroll down. Did anybody say anything about the giveaway? Logan, that's not the right video. Fisherman Chris. Oh, I know who you are now. Oh, I didn't put the two and two together. I'm sorry, man. Dang it. Okay. And I never even showed you these these maps he sent me to the rad. He's got the underwater. He sent the underwater everything of the Willamette River. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So it's like you're saying, it shows the cables, it shows the depth, it shows everything. Where's that? Yeah, how do you get that there. map? It's public. It's on. It's you can Google it or whatever, but he sent me the link. I'm like, wow, it was awesome. Um, what bait you use at Harriet Lake? Okay, so um, at Harriet Lake, like great for the kids is to throw power bait out there, <clears throat> throw power bait onto the three foot leader. Um, and I know certain times of the year on that side of the bank, um, some of the the grass gets pretty tall depending on how far you cast out. Um, so there, there could be a lot of weeds on that lake. So I recommend at least a three foot leader, you know, or if you like me, you like casting rooster tails. Dum -dum. Always going to go back to the black rooster tail. So you can't beat this thing with a wood stick. Um, maybe a black and yellow. Black and yellow, black and yellow. I, I think black and yellow is kind of effective. It kind of looks like an insect yeah. of some sort. Dingle but, or? Uh, it goes back to what we were talking about the other day about changing it up. No, for sure. And it relates, you guys, this relates back. This is a Pro fish, okay. uh, this goes back to so many. If you guys like talk to these guys and you talk to pro fishermen and everything, and the fishing in general goes back to if the fish aren't biting, you know there's fish there. Change it up. Go to something different. You know, like you're saying. Not only colors, lures though. You know, you yeah. can change your entire presentation. Yeah. Start. Yeah. Start with lures. Okay. Mm -hmm. If lures don't work, start with the same lure, different color. Mm -hmm. If the same lure, different color doesn't work. Lengthen your leader or shorten it or whatever you are doing, change, you know, flop that over and use the same bait, the same lure, and just keep switching it up. Yeah, and that's why that's why I'm trying to say, you know, sometimes and I'm sure a lot of you guys do it too, you guys get in this habit or routine of you know what works and you you continue to use it and that's you get focused on that. And I feel that part of being a more successful fisherman is not necessarily focusing on one particular bait. Like I'm so hung up on this spinner because I've been fishing it since I was a kid and I've caught so many different fish off of it and it works so well. Well, a lot of times that's not the spinner to go to. So, Top um, lot. Um, I'm sorry you can't hear me right now. It's just that my phone audio is not working very well right now and this live feed is on Frugal Fishing and Fundamentals channel as well. You can go over to his channel, watch the live feed, his, the sound quality is better. Um, or you can play the sound from his and watch mine, whatever you guys want to do. Mm -hmm. Here's another guest. Good morning. No. Crazy about fishing. You must be really far away. You're in India. That's awesome. Sweet. Cool. Got a viewer from India. That's cool. Awesome. Um, I'm trying to get back into these comments so I can catch up. That's a whole different species thing. Cod Nation has an 18 foot intruder yeah. that we're welcome on. Yeah. Sweet. We'll, we'll look into that, Cod Nation. Yes, we will. <laughs> 18 feet, man. That means you got room oh, over here. Is that it? No. Um, Logan, I can't tell you that's not a John Day video, and I can't tell you that it is. But you were on the right track earlier, and now you're not. Jeremy told us in March or April you want to head out and fish in the Fort Marion. Yeah, that's springer season. That's uh, madhouse time. It's on. So I, I know, Jeremy, you and Ryan have been wanting to fish for sturgeon over here and, and salmon. 
If you come during that time, it's gonna be Sam and Jason. It's gonna be Sam and Jason. Fourth We're not even gonna mess around with third no. during that season. So, no, that's like I don't know. For me, that's my favorite time of year. Uh, I've been thinking about it all day today too for some stupid reason. So. I've been looking up. I'm looking forward to fishing spring this big time. Yeah. Um, okay, so he said, you know, you can Google jet maps. Um, so it's probably too much. So when we stop, we'll get our phones. We can check it out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, fall fishing, river for smallies. I don't know. I mean, I go out there and mess around sometimes. I did that this summer. Just I want to talk about uh, another thing you can do for trout fishing. Um, a lot of people think crankbaits are just for bass, you know. But you can actually throw a crankbait and troll a crankbait. Get a deep diving crankbait. It dives like 15 feet down, you know, 12, 12 to 20 feet down, whatever. And just troll with a crankbait. And that thing through the water. And I swear to you, even Angler West has a video they're catching trout on crankbaits. Troll. Yep. So, and so does David Pyle. David Pyle's got a trolling video and they're catching trout on crankbaits. So, it's just another thing that you can do. You know, just like a salmon, you know. Mm-hmm. So I like the Angler West video where Roland Martin throws out a oh yeah throws out a bass crankbait. He's like the hell with that. everything you guys yeah. got. Mm-hmm. I'm Roland Martin. <laughs> yeah, and it just goes to show that you know it's just really cool. You know, changing it up, going back to changing it up. You know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. no Kelly, sorry, but I, I mean, I have already told that. Sweet Jeremy. Was that a Christmas present? Is that it? No. Uh, oh, you got the Tim Kara rod. North That's sweet. North Fork Lures. Um, it's not either of those videos. You guys have guessed like 20 of my videos so far, so you got to be getting closer. <laughs> One cast, one fish. What's going on? It's almost like one rod, one reel. Which, if you guys know, he's a bout and trap fisherman, and he hasn't been around lately. He has like almost a million subs, dude. He just kind of like fell off the map. Who? One, one rod, one reel. Really? Yeah. He was kind of part of the uh, Googans for a little bit, and he wasn't, and something didn't work out with the Googans with him, and hmm. and he kind of just stopped fishing, dude. It's like, where's this guy at? Yeah. We're uh, YouTube fishing channel fans too, in case you guys didn't know. <laughs> we watch the Googans, and I'm sure you guys know we watch the Jig Jigs. Most of the Jig Jigs. Yeah, we watch we watch a a lot of the Jig Jigs. I don't really watch too much of the stuff when they're just posting videos to post videos, but I like the stuff for sure. Definitely like the stuff. So here goes another tutorial from Nick. Like I'm saying, this is a great channel, you guys. And so if you guys missed it earlier, this is Northwest yeah, Open That's season. right. We got new viewers. Okay, so yeah. let's just go over this again. So what we do is, you guys, we're doing a new thing here on each week. Man, I can't do your mouse. Your mouse is the complete opposite scrolling up and down with mine. It's bad. No. Oh. Anyways, what we're doing each week is we're um, showcasing a channel. Okay? So... See you later, North Fork. Thanks for watching. We didn't even talk about how we were going to pick a channel, did we? No. Let's talk about that. Oh, we didn't even say the criteria, did we? Anyways, we're, we're uh, you know, we're, we're going to uh, showcase the channel each week on our live feed. And basically, we're going to play your content in the background, and we're going to link your channel in the description. Oh, we, we touched on it. And we're going to talk about your channel throughout the video, like we're doing right here with Nick. There's a couple things that you guys okay. need to meet the criteria to yeah. be posted up in the background here. Yes, and it's very simple. And um, your channel needs to be related to fishing, camping, or outdoors. You know, it's yeah. kind of what we do. We're all into that kind of stuff. And you guys need to have at least one hour of content that you guys can put into a playlist so we can play it. Like Nick did for me today. I talked to him about showcasing his channel today. Uh, to start things off, because this was actually his idea to showcase a channel in the background, and I think it's a great idea. So, um, 
And maybe eventually, if I could figure out a way, I might hook up my TV and I could have my big screen here maybe and even have a bigger view. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I got you guys can tell us what you think in the comments. But um, so yeah, and then so yeah, it's his idea. We're showcasing it, and you guys need to you know create a playlist like he did for me, and so we can hit play and then we'll play in the background and that's it. So um, if you guys have that, um, you know you have a channel like that, and you guys want to be on here. Just send me an email at frugalfishingfundamentals.com, and we're gonna pick. Um, you know, like I said, you guys just have to meet that criteria, too. And we're just gonna pick. What are we gonna do? Draw from a hat or whatever? Yeah, we'll have a bucket or a hat or something here with, with, with paper in it. it. We'll yeah. throw names in it of all these channels that meet those criteria, and we'll draw a name. That channel will be featured. Yeah. The which, following week. Which is cool because not only is your channel being featured. We're going to talk about your channel every time it's up there. So you're going to kind of get a shout out in a sense, and that's, that, that can help with many things, your subs and your likes and all that. Your view time. Uh, Logan, uh, you have not named the video yet, Logan. No, oh, we still need a winner. You guys, come on. This is a good question, huh? I know. We we asked the question at least twenty minutes ago. I know we did. Um, All right. So let's let's touch upon that question again. So you guys that just came in. Um, sorry, I was I was reading the comments. I know we're sitting comments. there. <laughs> the comments are coming in. It's hard so, to keep up sometimes, you guys. We're sorry. So so uh, for you guys that just came in, and don't know, we're doing a giveaway in this live feed. If you missed a question earlier, it has not been answered. Um, what is the title of the video? in which I caught my first catfish on film. It's on my channel, Fishing the Odds. Yeah. It's Go check it out. See if you can chime in. We're going to have to stay live until somebody... Uh... Until somebody answers it. Nobody cares. Does this say freeze or is it me? Oh, is our live feed frozen? Uh oh. It sure is. What happened? Hmm. It's interesting. Is our live feed frozen, guys? Yeah, it is. What? What about mine on my camera? Mark Leslie, I care, man. I care about this this uh, giveaway. I want people to enjoy the prize. Okay. My YouTube app totally shut down. Did it? Yep. Are you still live? Well, no, it shut down. What should I do? Restart it up. How the hell does that does that happen, dude? You got four watching now. How? Oh, there's it's all right guys, so <laughs> Mike's live feed on the channel Frugal Fishing Fundamentals went down, so this is the only live feed that's kinda up right now. It's coming up again. Uh, we we talked about everything we were we planned on talking about. Um, right now we're just kind of waiting on a giveaway um, answer. Nobody's nobody has answered the giveaway question yet. So Mike's getting his live feed set back up. Well. Are you back?
Yes, I'm I'm back. Wow. Are you getting it? All right. Third time's a charm, guys. So I gotta open up a whole new thing. Uh, no, just click on my little. Well, yeah, so um, you guys are just joining in on the new live feed. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. My, everything just went down like this. So, yeah, it's basically been our. No, no one got. Is this the new live feed right now? No, are you still on the old one? Or what? I think it's the old one. It's just kind of. Oh, it's refreshing or what? I are we even. No, I just, I don't know if you're clicking on the right thing, because it says we're live here. Yeah, Larry, Larry Davis on my channel. My, my channel is live, but his isn't live. His had technical difficulties, whatever. I'll let him figure that out. Yeah, I'm not but, sure. Yeah, yeah, Nick uh, from Northwest Oklahoma. Right there, we are still going. We're still doing the live feed. Nobody has guests to give away questions. This might be the first live feed where nobody gets... Nobody gets prize. There it is, see? There you go. Quality's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an upgrade, man. Logan, I don't know what happened. Um, oh, you don't know the question? Um, yeah. Yeah, we're live now. On my channel, what is the first video I need to title? Is crappy. Sorry. What is the first video I need to title? Um, I caught my first catfish on film. Sorry, what video did I catch my first catfish on film? We need the title of it. We need the title. You got everybody watching your videos right now, huh? <laughs> this wasn't like something to try to get you guys to watch this video. That we just thought you guys might know, but... Logan's just throwing everything out there. Not it, Logan. <laughs> Nobody said it, dude. It's like... There's not that many. Oh, Nick just tuned in. Yeah, I know. He, he told me again? He missed the whole thing. That's oh. the question. Yeah. That's why I was repeating the question. No. Nick, you can check my channel. It's back on. But All right. No one knows talk fish, says Mark Lester. No. You didn't miss it, Brandon. It's Nobody's got it yet. But the live feed went out, and then now we're back on this. And look at this. Quality is horrible. What is going on? Mark, let's talk about fishing. Um, I'm going to be steelhead fishing New Year's. And is that it? No. And I'm going to be fishing. <laughs> I'm going to be fishing soft beads primarily. Um, we're going up to the coast. Uh, because I haven't heard of much success around here um, in the Gresham area in the Clackamas area and everything like that. There's been a few fish caught, but I really just want to go up to the coast because I know I'm going to catch a fish. That's yeah. pretty much what it's going down to. We've, yeah, we've got a killer spot that we go to. Where, where are you months. located, Mark? Are you still catching coho? Are you in Washington? We hooked a coho. It was in my last video. I was, I was in a drift boat with Logan on the Sandy River, and we hooked a big red coho, and, and I was a live coho. And that was uh, at Dabney, Dabney Fish Park. Do you watch this in Southwest, maybe? Probably. I don't know. Southwest. Southwest Washington. What what rivers are you fishing? Is that it? No. Nope, Logan. This is where I'm with. I don't I don't know Southwest Washington very well because is that it? No. Because I uh I've fished Oregon my whole life. 
So, uh, if there's like one main river in Southwest Washington, I don't know what it is. So I kind of, I'm kind of curious to where you're catching these coho in Washington. Nope, Logan. No, I don't know. No, I, I like asking you. Right. I'm seeing your reaction. Oh, now I just go into the list. Oh, the Lewis. Oh, okay. Pop. Oh, really? Okay, for sure, yeah. So, yeah. Are you bank fishing or drift boat fishing? And how far up are you? He said it's no secret. Actually, I've only heard of people messing around for fillies and around there, so I don't know. Well, yeah, I know the Lewis ain't no secret. Everybody knows the Lewis. Yeah. I just didn't know the Southwest Washington. I don't even think about Washington in terms of direction. Right where I got popped, too. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> right at the mouth of the Lewis. I'm just surprised that he's still catching the coho. It is pretty crazy that you're still catching coho. It's the bee on the river. Most of us see them over here now. Is the quality still horrible? Or because it seems like the second. Uh, it just looks like crap, but I don't know. Anyways, is that it? Okay, cool. It's just on our end then, the computer. Right. Whatever, well, yeah, cool with that. It's probably the Google Live. It's probably the Google Live sticker I put on the front of it. You think? Yeah. Screw up your quality. Yeah. You're going to screw little computers. <laughs> No, and that's not true though. Sometimes. Give us hints on the giveaway. What surprise? There's a bass in the video. That's the hint. There's a bass in the video. I caught catfish. Below. Better now. Got cut off before. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Cool, Jeremy. Below the meat hole. Mark Leslie. I'm trying to remember if I've seen that name anywhere. Do you have a Facebook mark? That was a weird question, whatever. Is that a guess? Not it. Not it. Another, another reason I, I haven't been talking much about uh, steelhead fishing or coho fishing is because the way my life has been, I have not been able to fish for those two species as a, as much. Otherwise, man, I'd be like, yeah, I caught a steelhead this size, I caught a coho that size, and man, that coho was big, and he fought hard, and all that good stuff. But, but the know, problem is there are just too many jacks this year for coho. You guys look at all the counts and notice that there's uh, more jacks than adults. Anybody seeing that? <laughs> yeah, but it's like way more jacks. And adults. Yeah. It's completely reversed. Mm -hmm. So, we caught some jacks this year. That's the last coho we caught were jacks. Yeah. I caught three or four jacks this year. Coho jacks. Yeah. Man, he caught a jack that was so freaking red. That was black. That's, yeah, it was like, well, it was like a dark, super dark red, because they get bigger red. Yeah, this, this is black. Well, I'm colorblind, probably. Maybe it was red. I hooked up. I hooked what would have been the biggest coho of my life this year um, on the Sandy River at Oxbow. When the water was super low, you guys remember that drought? Um, I hooked a coho on a spinner. And actually, I was twitching a spinner. I wasn't casting and retrieving or nothing. I was casting a spinner out into this hole behind this rock. And the reason why I was fishing a pool, no, the, the reason why I was fishing this deep pool was because the water was so low. That was the only deep spot on the river. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, brute. Oh. And this was down at Oxbow. And I was just letting a, a spinner, a cast it up thing, and let it sink down into the hole and just twitch it. Like you're twitching jigs. And man, that, that coho hit it. He came up and he jumped. Super aggressive. He came up and jumped like two feet, three feet. And I lost that fish, but... It would have been uh, okay. The next time. Okay, so we got some stuff to cover real quick, you guys. Here, it's it's getting better. So real quick, um, right there. I know, I know. Quiet. No, fisherman Chris. The answer. Oh, you got it. 
That's right, Fisherman Chris. Okay, cool. We won the prize. Cool. So, anyways, but back to Fisherman Chris. Lots of uh, jacks, you know, mean a better run next year, and you're not the only person that has said that to us. Um, we were, we've been talking to some of the hatcheries, and some of the hatcheries say a lot of times it can be that way, but it's not like a guarantee. But a lot of times it'll stack up to be that way, and you know. But um, you want to talk about that? No. Brandon, Brandon, uh, Brandon, how do you say his last name? Aga, Aga, Brandon Aga. Um, I have heard some things. I have a couple guide buddies, and I've heard some but things. But you are talking about it. No, not the full thing. Well, this is an asking. Yeah. I've just heard some things about next spring of the season, and it's not looking good. What have you heard? For the Columbia River. What have, have you heard, Brandon? If you're a fisherman, let it out. <laughs> and you're fishing the Columbia River for springers, you're probably not going to like the new, not the new, but you're not going to like next season's, what do you call it, rules, whatever. Three year fish. Nah. A jack's not a three year fish. No. Um, a, a jack is. Um, a fish that returns to spawn within the first year. Yeah, and a lot of times they don't even make it out to the ocean. A lot of times, according to our resources and some of the hatcheries that we talk to, you guys got to remember we we contact. I I talk to a hatchery at least once a week. I'm on the phone with them. That's just the way I am. But um, sometimes they go to the ocean. Yeah, sometimes. But um, most of the time they go to the estuary and just hang out, and then they just come back in and they return. Um, you know, so that's kind of the. The lieutenant. Oh no, no, Brandon. No, that's why. No. That's why. No way. That's what I was telling you earlier. The projected numbers of the salmon return next year. Oh my. We God. can talk about that. The projected numbers for the salmon return this year is like more than a hundred thousand less than last year. No. If not more. This is like one well, hundred fifty-six thousand. Was it last year's projection like three hundred thousand? I don't know what the prediction was. But didn't we get over that? Didn't wasn't I? Didn't, I haven't checked the runs lately. But do you think it'll be three hundred thousand? I I don't think it was that much. But you are talking springers. I I follow fall fishing on the Columbia more than springer runs, so I don't know how they well, separate or whatever. Yeah. But usually the counts on the Columbia are way 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 higher. Logan, why didn't you say that bass video? You you sent all the other bass videos except that one. They, and so that's why Fisherman Chris won the prize. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it pisses me off too, dude. That might have limited days. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You guys remember two years ago on the Willamette, halfway during the season, they shut it down to three days a week and one fish. Someone said a jack is a three year fish at the hatchery. I think he was a new employee or something. Yeah, I and I say it. this because a lot of the springers that we're catching and stuff Those are that, two and three year fish. that come back 8 to 10 to 11 pounds can be 2 to 3 year fish. So you know a jack is nowhere in that ballpark. And if, if a jack went to the ocean and it was feeding, there's no way it wouldn't get big. Because yeah. they feed heavy when they're in the ocean. That's why they come back so big. And, and not only that, they release their coho and steelhead at what 12 to 4 it's a, it's a it's huge size it's like 10 to 12 inches it's like 10 to 12 size. inches they release yeah. them when they're like a trout size and we're catching them at 14 inches or you know whatever 15 inches which tells you that that jack has not eaten as much and it has not gone gone out to the big ocean and Just fed heavily it yeah. tells you that the jack went to the estuary and came back and or didn't even make it to the estuary and came back and spawned Man, that name is so hard to pronounce. Logan, you're you're right, but if you yeah, if you help, what's going on, man? If you actually watch my topwater bass whelps video, I I fish um, for topwater, yes, but I also fish crankbaits and senkos and stuff in that video. And uh, thanks for being a good fan, dude. Not watching the whole video. Well, that's some encouraging news, Nick. I I would love to see that. You know. I don't know. All right, so um, like I just let's tell Fisherman Chris how he wins the prize. 
We haven't even talked about that yet. He won, and we got to talk about how you can contact me. Oh, well, I thought everybody knew. Just you email me. Email your email me your address, and I'm gonna send you out a prize. And we usually get the prizes sent out um, the following week. So like you know, but it's Christmas. So, and this is the last live feed, you guys, of this year, just so you know. Um, so we should hopefully be back on track next year in January. And, um, yeah, with the Christmas holidays, it might be a week or so before I get it sent out. Um, but, yeah, send you a package out. You just email me your address at frugalfishingfundamentals at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And if you, you follow my Instagram, I'm pretty sure you do. You've seen some of the prizes we sent out, so. And this prize, I had something in mind. I was trying to pick it up after work, but I couldn't. I didn't have time to go pick it up. And I wanted to show it off. But, yeah. Anyways, we'll show it off on the Instagram feed. And you have uh, a steelhead behind us right here. Watch some of the tells us this video right here. He's hooking up on a steelhead. Sweet. What is this? The Sandy? This isn't the Sandy, no. No, this is the class. The Sandy Amp? Sandy, I said it. I called it. Called it. I don't even fish this river, and I called it, dude. There you oh. go. Yeah, Sandy River. I thought this was one of the hooks that was still having the Sandy one. I, mean, I kind of wanted to show off my new reel. You haven't even seen my new reel I got. I'm not worried about it. Dude, I got an ultra light reel that is amazing. <laughs> just like a just, just You're going to like this. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Dude, feel the drag on it. Dude, it is so butter. This is some nice. Where'd you get it at? The sail? Yeah. Feel that drag. And then look, the drag adjustment. Yep. Look at the oh, embroidery and cool, stuff on dude. it, dude. Look at all the embroidery on it. Where'd you get that? Wow, huh? I can't wait to catch a trout on that. I got it at the um, Guide Supply Shop that's going out of business. They had all their reels and rods all 50% off. This is the only thing that's a little iffy, but everything else is killer. Dude, I'll, I'll get that rebuilt. I don't care. I'll put new grains in it. It's totally worth it. And not only that, this is the quick fire. So when I was back in the day, I had this reel, a Shimano reel, and it had the quick fire system on it, and I've never been able to find one since. I just had this. So with their string on here, you can do it with one finger. Yeah. Look, this is a quick fire. Oh yeah, sweet. This is um, it's gotta be fun, right? Yeah, you pull well, like anything else, put it up there and you can do it with one finger. You know, if your line's there you can grab it a lot more easier. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I can't wait to catch that on there. It's gonna be fun. That's why I'm thinking about going out because I can totally pose this so we can tell Alright, let's let's do this. So for annual totals at Bonneville, 2013. 15 to 15 had over 1 million fish in 2015. Yeah, 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 yeah. 17 had 48 days. <coughs> so, so this projected number that is 156 is off the chart. Well, no. What? The projected number is at 156,000. Is that is that trainer fish only? That's what he said. Or is that because right here it looks like all salmon? What fish in the Christmas salmon? Is this all salmon? Yeah, annual total. Okay, so, but the 150,000, if you add that to the fall projections as that's well. That's why I said earlier, be, I don't know if they're separating the two. I don't know that. Yeah, that's kind of what it seems like. But 156,000. Brandon right? saying only Springer. Yeah, so. Yeah, so when you add the fall trimester to that, it's going to be worse than 488 probably. And it's still going to be like 400,000, maybe 350,000 fish. Fish on. <laughs> He's just in the back watching the video. <laughs> it's funny. We both read the comment and we both turn our heads no, and no. like, oh, he's got a fish. That's sweet. I like the video playing in the background. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool, especially when the, they engage. Yeah. Don't worry, Nick, man. I know we all been trying to fit together. It's going to happen. I promise, bro. I was going to text you tomorrow, Nick, and ask if you want to go out Saturday to Henry Hands. 
ask me now because you're walking. But anyways, I'll text you later, talk about it. But I have, may have Saturday, Sunday open, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, we'll move end it. <laughs> he's loyal, man, I'll give him that. Wait, is that Logan? <laughs> I don't know. What do I have? Two? <laughs> it's probably like seven or eight, like usual. You're averaging about 11 goals this year. Okay. Yeah. That's cool after we did the giveaway, too. Appreciate you guys watching, and I hope you guys are all going to have a happy holidays, too. Um, we should have a little Christmas tree here. We should have. I wish you all a yeah. Merry Christmas yeah. and a Happy New Year. Sunday in January looks sick. Sandy. Yeah, Logan, let's do it for sure. Uh, remember, Mike's dog ain't going. It's a pretty good fight. Look, he's still fighting it. Fishing Weber, yeah. If you go to Bend and you fish, and you fish, there's, I don't know what you're targeting, but there's some good trout fishing in Bend. Mm -hmm. Yep, and if you look at the Life of a Fly Fisherman channel. Nick? Why would... I don't care what the news and all these other liberals are saying, man. I'm going to say Christmas. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm going to put that up there. Hell no. It's always been Christmas. It will always be Christmas in my house. Look. Was that on a bead? I think that was on a bead. Bobby. Trout or bass. Yeah, so... Oh, dude, the new seals. Yeah, you reminded us. What? They started getting rid of seals and sea lions in, in, in the Willamette. 920 new seals are gone. Oh, my gosh. If you start talking about that, we're going to call back the activists. You guys know, like, every time I post a video, a salmon video, I get the activists on there talking about how we're killing all the sea lions and everything. It's horrible. So, no, I don't, actually, I don't know about 920 new Seals. I don't care about the seals. I'm more interested in the sea lions. There's a big difference there. That's what that's what Fisherman Chris talked about. He's saying sea lions, not seals. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, sea lions. Okay, lion. I see the comment now. Yeah. California sea lions and others. Spawn sack and UVB. They try accommodation. I say seals, seal on accident, whatever. Yeah. I think they're the same thing anyway. The ears, Bruce. The ears. It's all in the ears. Secret sauce is going on too. Gotta love it. Dude, they are a crazy invasive, man. And they should be killed. Yeah. Well, they shouldn't be killed to extinct, but they should be brought back to a level that is fair. You know, and push their ass back out in the ocean, dude, where they come from. Yeah, I think if the population was brought down, you wouldn't have the influx invading this area. I think. I'm no biologist, so I don't know you guys, but. It, it's sad that they eat, um, they eat salmon. For sure, and steelhead. I mean, it's it's terrible, and I hate it, and I hate it, and I hate it. But what's also sad is you could see a couple sea lions killing a ten foot sturgeon at times. That ten foot sturgeon is a hundred years old, man. Salmon, you know, and they're prehistoric. They've been around, and my kid will catch one that I might have caught, you know, and I know, huh? and it's it's just crazy. Sturgeon, sturgeon. They don't talk about sturgeon ever when they talk about sea lions and problems. They don't. But that, that's yeah. a big problem, too, because sturgeon fishery is a... You know, it hurts sometimes, too, and if you keep up on it, a lot of them say hurting in general. So it's my first video I posted on my channel is a sea lion eating a sturgeon, and it looks like an oversized sturgeon. You know, it's a big sturgeon for that, and it's gnarly. And we got close, and I had my son in the boat, and what you guys don't see in that video is me getting scared and throwing down my camera and hitting the gas on my boat because that sea lion was so huge and it got so close to the boat. And it's a wild animal with big teeth feeding. <laughs> I didn't want to get around it. So, oh wow, there you go. So the president passed a bill to allow 920 sea lions to be killed each year by five specific tribes. Very good. Now, is that here just for the Columbia? That's here for the Columbia River. Is that what you're saying? And the Willamette. 
Mm-hmm. So those, the same five things that get to come in and harvest the lamps right now, they get to chew on. I wonder what methods they get to use. I'm interested. I'm, we've got to go up and film it. Right? Yep. I actually, there's a, there's a place I fit for carp on the, uh, on the Willamette. And like, there's no business for a sea lion to go here. It's shallow, it's like five feet, dude, but it's like a carp pool. And I see sea lions eating carp out there all the time. So yeah, they eat everything and anything. Yeah, Fish and Liver said they've seen that video. Crazy, yeah, it's us. Sea lions are like the coyotes of the water. They kill for fun. What? No, don't eat. Well, you can eat a salmon from the Willamette or a steelhead, but I wouldn't recommend eating any other fish in the Willamette. That's my opinion. I was telling my buddy about your crawdad experience. Yeah. Yeah. And we started talking about eating. I was like, no, I can't eat from the Willamette. No. Well, I'd use so, a salmon bait. Yeah, so check this out, guys. Check this out. Hold on, real quick. I want to go back to that real quick and give my uh, opinion on eating fish from the Willamette River, you guys. And if you guys look in the fishing regulations book, they have um, serving sizes that they allow you to eat. They totally do. Certain levels of mercury. Certain level uh, of, yeah, of what kind of, and I don't know what the what they are, but if I see anything like that, that's just a red flag. It's just not going to happen. Um, you don't even eat anything. Salmon are in the river for not that long. Let's say in the Willamette River, you know, they, uh, if you're going to catch them right here at the falls, it could be a couple days, it could be a week at the most, it could be a day, you know, depending on, you know, what they're doing or how they're holding in the water conditions. So, and in that time period, they're not eating. Say it could be two weeks, you know, that's my opinion. Yeah. And, yeah, especially in the beginning, I think they come in and hold in some of these deeper pools when yeah. the water's flowing a lot more. So, um, and they spend a little more time, you know. But, anyway, that's just my thoughts and theories, which mean nothing. But, <clears throat> The salmon, when they enter the fresh water, they don't eat, they don't feed. They do their feeding out in the ocean and they enter the river and they burn up their fat reserves and come up so they're not feeding. Therefore, they're not ingesting whatever's in that river into their anatomy. That's gonna eventually make it into my anatomy. And that's the way I look at it, so. I didn't know. Oh, I know, Nick, I lo- that's why I wanna see him too. Oh, hell yeah, put a tag on some sea lions, dude. Yeah. Any Let us all start killing them. Clackamas steelhead. Well, we've heard of, uh, I've heard of one caught on the Clackamas. That was, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, at the mouth of the Clackamas, there was a nice mm-hmm. chrome steelhead caught on the fly. Got was fly fishing a, 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 was it a streamer? I'm not sure. I think it was a black streamer. But, uh, I, I, I was sturgeon fishing recently at or- in Oregon City. When was this? When was this? Fisherman Chris, when was when was that? When were you steelhead fishing at High Rock and seeing the sea lion? Because when I see sea lion at High Rock, I'm catching fish. <laughs> anyway, I was fishing the... Um, Isn't that horrible? I was fishing the bank. You're seeing sea lions at, at, at High Rock now, dude. I mean, that's terrible. Nasty, dude. At Oregon City, and every time I cast a snow out, I was fishing snow, I'd reel in a crawdad. Every yeah, time. That? You'll actually see that in my next video. I'm actually going to be working on the video tonight. You'll see a crawdad walking my snow. <laughs> Pretty cool, actually. Crazy. And, and then I saw a guy down there with a bow and a net, like a crab pot. And he was tying baits to his crab pot and throwing it down right there. And he was catching crawdads like you go crabbing. It was cool. He says he's uh, always catching crawd on the worms. <sighs> All right, Con Nation. We'll catch you later. We're getting ready to get out too. It's it's late. We've gone way past our. Uh, All right, Con Nation. Yeah, we're gonna one hour probably. one hour deal. Um, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate the invite a lot. I'm I'm always looking forward to going out on boats with people and, and having a good time, drinking beers and so on and so on. Yeah. So. Yeah.
Thank you for the invite. I'll take you up on that when I have time, I promise. My favorite technique is beads. 100% speed. Spinners. Or whatever they're biting on. Now that after I went to the seminar. And that's the one thing I didn't talk about. Oh, man. I went to the addiction seminar and I learned some new techniques, you know, that I will be incorporating. And I actually went out and bought a whole new setup that I haven't even talked about yet. So, yeah, I use beads, whatever. Um, Don't feed whatever me, dude. Beads are a killer steelhead technique. You know, so effective. Anyways. Um, so I'm getting into some bobber dogging, you know, with some jigs, and we can talk like about some, some yarn. Your theory behind uh, pegging a bead up three inches. We don't know. Okay. No, come on, we don't have to talk about any of that. Uh, so anyway, whatever, whatever, cool. uh, my email is frugalfishingfundamentals at gmail dot com, and uh, just let me know that you won. Logan, don't mail my no. beads. No, he's asking me because he's on my channel. No, come up here and take me fishing. No, I'm just playing. And then you can give me your beads. I, I told you, Logan, when we, when we meet up and go steelhead fishing, you give me the beads back. And then I'll use them for that. Want a beer, Logan? <laughs> you just had to throw that in there, huh? Oh, man. One of these days, dude, I'll take you to the bar. It'll be fun. Vodka would be right to my ball. See, Nick knows. Nick, Nick, you're a very smart fisherman. Screw all them spanners for steelhead. Beads. Fine. Um, Depends on where you are, though. But we caught a steelhead together already this year, if you remember. On a what? Trolling. You're not going to troll a bead. If you did troll a bead, if you did troll a bead, you'd probably catch three steelies. <laughs> Troll a bead on a treble hook, man. You got a steely on each one of the hooks. What are you gonna troll it like backwards? No, I'll just put. I'll, I'll literally put a bead on each hook. Just shut the motor off and just. <laughs> we're trolling. Yeah. Now you got me thinking. Three and five now. <laughs> oh no. Shot. I'm down. I'm down. down. Friday? Or you, you, mean you can't make it out Friday? No, I'm hanging out with my daughter Friday, fishing rubber, so I won't be there. But I'm down for trout, for sure. No, no, no. I'm not, though. I don't do trout. Sorry. I'll have his shots, too. My daughter is one years old. I don't think she wants to go to the bar. All right, Logan, have a good weekend, man. All right, Logan, good luck this weekend. I know you're headed out to the coast. So, I want to see some pictures on your Facebook or your uh, Instagram, I'm sorry. I don't do Facebook. You guys, anybody that's still watching this channel, I started a whole Facebook thing, and I know a lot of you guys got invites and all that stuff, but Facebook shut it down. And they said I was in trying to impersonate myself. However that worked, I don't know. But um, Merry Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, uh, we're going to head out. All right, so let's, um, I'm going to end with my phone. Thanks for watching, guys. Merry Christmas. Have happy holidays. Happy New Year. Yeah, we appreciate all your guys' time, views, and uh, look forward to catching more fish.